Hey, I'm Evan, head of engineering for RM Stator. Uh, today we're going to show you how to test your stator. Uh, depending on your vehicle, motorcycle, ATV, side-by-side, -side, watercraft, uh, doesn't really matter. All these types of power sports engines use stators and you need to know how to test them. If you have one long enough, uh, you're probably going to have a problem with it and you're going to need to know how to tell if it's good or bad. Um, watch some of our other videos about what stators are and how they work uh, so you know about the different types of coils on the stator. Um, I'm going to show you how to test the different kinds the source coil, the pickup coil if it's included, and the charging or lighting coils on the stator. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to show you how to test a stator. Um, these stators are obviously out of the motor. Um, a lot of times you'll be testing with your stator installed in the motor, and that's not a problem. You generally don't need access to the stator itself, just to the connectors out at the end of it. So here's a good example of a charging stator. Uh, the stator has a single coil just meant to charge a battery. You can tell by the large uh, gauge and uh, bare looking copper wire on it. Um, so there's two different tests we want to do on stator coils. What we're concerned with is to see that the coils of the stator are intact, so they're still connected end to end, and we want to make sure in most cases that the stator coils are not grounded and by grounded I mean touching the metal core of the stator in which case uh, there would be continuity to ground or to the frame uh, and therefore the battery negative terminal in a charging system stator um, that would prevent it from uh, producing any current. So what you want to do is look up the specs on your stator so you know what you're trying to test. Um, for instance, I know this stator, if I look up the specs for it, is, uh, should measure about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 ohms. Um, and that's between the two leads from the stator. So here I have my multimeter connected to the two leads from the stator and I have my multimeter set to the correct resistance range. Now a quick note on that, once you look up your spec and you know what measurement you should be getting if the stator was good, you want to set your meter to the resistance range, which is the ohm setting. You can see by the kind of uh, little upside down horseshoe looking guy. Um, you want to set it to the lowest resistance range that is above what you're trying to measure. So that way you get the most accuracy, but you can also take a measurement um, within the range that you're ex expecting. So here I can see that I'm measuring 0 0.4 ohms, which is perfect for this stator. And then the other test I want to do is I want to see if the coil is shorted. So this just tells us the coil is intact from end to end. It could still be touching the core somewhere, which we wouldn't want. To test that, I can leave one of my meter leads connected to either leg of the stator or either, either terminal. And I can connect my other one to the metal core of the stator. In this case, I should be measuring an open circuit. Depending on your meter, it might show OL uh, for open loop, meaning there's no connection between your two leads. This meter shows a one with the decimal place far away, saying it's not a valid number. So, this shows us that we have an open circuit to ground, which is perfect for this kind of stator. So let's check out another type. Okay, so here is a, what's called a three-phase uh, battery charging stator. We know it's meant to charge a battery because it's got large gauge uh, copper looking wire on it. And it has three wires in it and they're all yellow. So that's pretty standard. That tells us it's a three-phase stator, which means it has three coils arrayed around the stator. Um, what we want to do is the same test we just did before. We want to measure between each coil to know that each coil is intact from end to end. And then we also want to measure from uh, each coil or, or at least one of the coils to ground to the metal core of the stator which if this was installed in a motor we could just measure to the frame or a motor mount bolt or the battery negative terminal because they would all be connected through the mounting bolts. So I looked up my specs for this stator I know it should be about 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 something like that depends on my multimeter. So a quick note about testing charging stators like this with this large gauge wire um, it has very low resistance and we have a, a spec uh, that might say 0 0.5, 0 0.6. What we're looking for is that the number is, is reasonable, which would be below one ohm. And we also want to see um, that we get the same measurement between each coil, because each coil should be the same length. Um, I always say with charging stators like this that use large, uh, fairly large wire like this, don't be so concerned exactly what the number is. Like we can see on the meter here, we're measuring 0.4, and that's totally fine. We might take this same measurement with another brand multimeter and measure 0.6 or 0.7. So we don't really need to be super concerned with that. Most meters, especially fairly inexpensive meters like this one, are not super accurate at very low resistance, below one ohm. Um, so we don't need to be super concerned about the number. We just want to be 
concerned that it's reasonable, which is less than one ohm, and that we get the same number between each of the three pairs um, of wires. So here's our first pair. We're measuring one of the coils and we're getting a reasonable number, 0.4. So then I want to swap one of my meter leads to the next terminal and I should get the same thing. So 0.5, that's fine within a tenth of an ohm. That's totally reasonable. And you can see the meter changed a little bit back to 0.4 as it takes the measurement. That's totally reasonable. Um, then I want to check the third coil. So I'm going to move this up to here. So now I've tested all three combinations, which would measure between each uh, of the three coils of the stator. And I can see that I get the same thing. Okay, so that's fine. That says that all three of these coils are intact from end to end and they're a reasonable number on our meter. So that says that the coils are good. What it doesn't tell us is if we have a short to ground in the stator. Since I know that all three of these coils are connected, um, it doesn't matter which one I leave my meter on. So I'll just leave that guy right there. And then I'm going to connect the other end of my meter to the metal core of the stator and see what it says. So here I get a one with a decimal place far away. That says an open circuit. There's infinite resistance and there is no connection to ground. So this stator is good. So now let's take a look at a different type of stator. Okay, so here we have a three phase battery charging stator that also has some other stuff. We can see that it has a pickup coil attached, which uh, if you've watched our other videos about what these parts are, we know that's for the um, ignition system that provides our timing pulses for the ignition system. And we can see that, uh, if we look close, there's a green and a blue wire coming out of that. And we can see that green and the blue wire in this four pin plug here. Well, there's two other wires in this stator as well, a black and a white. So I'll tell you, you can't really see it, but the black and the white is called a position sensor coil. Uh, it's usually used on um, bikes or ATVs with a big single cylinder motor, and it's used for uh, kickback prevention. So it uh, basically will be producing a voltage. It's a very small coil wrapped under one of these. Um, it'll have very low resistance, and it will show uh, basically the polarity of the, the current coming from that coil. So the CDI box can tell if the motor is trying to turn backwards from kicking back and it'll kill spark. We'll show you how to test that as well. So first we're going to test our battery charging um, um, coils on the stator. Uh, again, we want to know that they're all uh, connected end to end and we know that all there's three coils and they're all connected on these yellow wires. And we want to measure something like 0 0.5, 0 0.6 between each pair. So we're doing that now. We can see one pair is good. I'm going to test all the combinations of these. Here's the next one. I get 0.6 as well, and I'll go to the last combination, and I get 0.6 as well. So that says each coil is good from end to end. The other test I want to do is to the metal core or to ground or the frame and see that I have an open circuit, and I do. Okay, so that's good. So now let's test the position sensor. So that would be the black and the white wires here. Now that's going to be a very small coil of the same size wire. So it's going to have very low resistance as well, below one ohm. So I'm going to leave my multimeter set to the same range, the lowest range I have. And I'm measuring a low resistance, about 0.4. So that looks good. I can also check it to ground and make sure that it's not shorted to ground. And it's not, so that says that coil is good. And then we want to test our pickup coil. So I looked up the specs for this stator. I know that the pickup coil should be 220 ohms. So I'm going to connect my meter to it, the blue and the green wire in this plug. So you'll see here, I'm still showing an open circuit. Well, why is that? This is a brand new pickup coil. It shouldn't be bad. Well, it's because I have my meter set on the wrong resistance range. I'm trying to measure 220 and my meter is only set to read up to 200. So I need to move my meter up one click to the 2K setting. So now the meter is expecting a measurement anywhere between 0 and 2000. And now we'll see that the meter is showing the correct reading, 221. And you'll see the decimal point there, that's because I'm on the 2000 setting. So if I move that over, I'd get 221, which is perfect for a 220 ohm coil. So I could also, this doesn't happen often, but I could check it to ground as well just to make sure it's an open circuit, and it is. Okay, good. So that tells me that all the coils are good on this stator that has multiple parts. 
All right, here's a stator that's uh, common. Uh, this type of stator is common to dirt bikes and ATVs. Um, you can tell that uh, it has some uh, battery charging or lighting coils here with the larger copper wire. And then we can see that it has some other coils that look different and they're cloth covered. So those are a uh, source coil to power an ignition system directly from the stator. So that's a different type of coil we'll have to measure. It also has a pickup coil for a timing signal. So first I'm measuring the source coils. That's between this, um, on this particular stator, this uh, black with the red stripe and this brown wire. And one side of the source coil is grounded, so which is the brown wire, and the other side is this uh, black and red wire. So I looked up the specs, I know it should be 118 ohms, which is exactly what I'm seeing. I have my meter set on the 200 range, so I can measure that number. And since I know one side's grounded, I could also go ahead and connect one side of my meter to the core of the stator and I should get the same measurement, which I do. So again, always look up the specs on your stator so you know what you're trying to test, what wire colors you're testing between, and what the measurement should be. So you know how to set your meter correctly and you know if you're getting the right measurement. So the other uh, coil, or the next coil I'm gonna test is this lighting and battery charging coil, which I know is between these white and green wires. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect my meter to those. And that, from the specs should be a low resistance, about 0 0.6, which it is, 0.5, that's fine. Okay, and I'm gonna check it to ground. It should not be grounded. So I have one uh, lead connected to the metal core and I see an open circuit, that's good. And then I wanna test the pulser coil. So I'm gonna connect to its wires. Okay, so I see that my measurement went away, but that's not likely for a brand new coil. Well, that's because I'm trying to measure over 200 ohms and I have the meter set to 200 ohms. I'm gonna bump it up a range to 2K and this should measure about 250 ohms and I'm measuring 247. So that says the pickup coil is good. To be safe, I know it should not be grounded. I can go ahead and check to the metal core of the stator and I see an open circuit or I could check the metal bracket of the pickup coil and I see that's open. So that all tests good. All right, let's look at one more. All right, here's a type of stator uh, with bar coils, so it kind of looks different, but we test it the same way. We need to test each of these coils separately. So we have a source coil here um, that's used for the ignition system power, and we have uh, two coils here with larger wire that are used for the lighting or the battery charging system. And then we have a pickup coil here that provides timing for the ignition system. So we need to test them all separately. On this stator, um, the uh, black, uh, black wire with the white stripe is grounded, and so I have it here also tied to the ground, the metal core of the stator. And then I'm gonna measure at each of the three other wires which are the different functions. So I know what uh, they are and what they should be from looking up the specs online, which you should always check first. So first I'm gonna check uh, the alternator, or the, the lighting or charging coils, which are these guys. And they should be low, about 0.6 ohms, 0.7, that's fine. And that was the yellow wire, so I'm measuring from there to ground or to the black with a white stripe. So that looks good. And then I want to measure the pickup coil. So I'm going to switch to the blue wire here, which is the pickup coil. And my meter shows an overload, so I need to go, or an open loop, I need to go up one step to read it. And it should be about 240, which it is. So that tests good. And then my other test is the source coil, which should be the third wire. And that shows about 380, which is what the spec is. So that says that the source coil is good. So as always, look up the specs online uh, on our website. Make sure you know what you're measuring and what it should be. Make sure you set your meter accordingly to the correct resistance range. And sometimes uh, some of you have auto ranging meters, which will set the range correctly on its own. So that makes it a little easier. Um, but as long as you follow those steps, you know what you're measuring and what it should be, you can measure it accurately and you can do the same thing whether it's in the bike or out on the bench.
So here we're going to look at how to actually test a stator on the bike. You definitely want to do the resistance tests first, uh, but then we can also do a voltage test with the motor running so we can see if the coil is producing what it should be. So the key to this is we need to measure the voltage between all three coils on the stator. Uh, we're using a three-phase stator here. If you're using a two-wire or a single-phase stator, you would just check between the two wires. Um, so here with the three-wire stator, once we have the motor running, we want to check the voltage at uh, idle RPM, which we'll say is about 1000 RPM. And we want to measure the AC voltage between each pair of wires. So what we're going to do is plug our meter in. I have our meter set to AC voltage and to the 200 setting, which is our lowest range. We're trying to measure between uh, 10 and 60 volts AC, so the 200 setting is fine. And I have the two leads of the meter connected to two of the stator wires. We're going to set this on our test bench spinning to about 1000 RPM and we're going to measure the voltage and see if it's reasonable. For this type of stator we should be seeing somewhere around 10 to 15 uh, volts AC at idle. And then we're going to check all three coils and see if they're even. We get the same measurement. To do that we're just going to change one wire at a time here at the stator plug so we check all three pairs. So we'll go ahead and spin the flywheel up here to about 1000 RPM and see what our voltage is on the first coil. Okay, perfect. So we're measuring about 10 volts AC on our first coil. So then I'm going to take our meter and change it to the next pair. And I measure 10.3 again, so that coil's even. And we're going to check the last pair. And 10.2. So we've checked all three pairs and we're getting good output for idle RPM and they're all matched. So that's a, the, the coils are all intact and they're all still even. The other thing we can also check is we know all three of these coils are connected so we can check from any one of them to a ground just to make sure that we don't have a path to ground from our stator coil. So I'm going to unplug one of these and touch it to the metal here which would be the same thing as our motor case or our frame on the motorcycle. And we show zero volts so that's good. That says the stator is not shorted. And again this is done with the stator unplugged from the regulator so there's no load on it. I'm going to plug this back in we'll see our voltage measurement. And then totally depends on your stator and how it's wound as far as what voltage you'll get at higher RPM. This is pretty standard for a battery charging stator. Um, this stator is a, a really high power, high current stator for a Polaris Razor, so it doesn't produce super high voltage. We're going to rev the, the flywheel up to four or 5,000 RPM or so, and we're going to see about 30 volts on this, which I know is uh, correct for this type of stator. On a lot of smaller charging stators, you'll probably see upwards of 60 plus volts AC. Okay, so here is our high RPM measurement. We're seeing about 30 volts on one pair, and we're going to check all three of them. Let's see if I can keep the meter from falling over. Here's our second pair. We're seeing 33 volts as well. And I'll check our third coil on the stator. And we're still measuring 33 volts. I can, I can check the ground as well just to be sure and I get no voltage. Okay perfect so go ahead and turn it off. So that's how you're going to test a stator on the bike. Again you're going to set your multimeter to the AC voltage setting and you want to check it at idle and at about 5000 RPM. So you're checking it at low output and at high output and see if the numbers are reasonable then you know that you're getting good output from your stator and you can assume that it's working well. Hey we'd really appreciate it if you'd like our videos and subscribe to them uh, and leave comments on the videos and let us know what you want to see next.